gonna do a five minute video. So I just did this on our one minute. When you make changes to the tax structure of a business, typically you'll do that with your CPA. And if people come to me, I say, listen, let's make sure we have a conversation with your CPA. But what's important is that the lawyer and the CPA are both on the same page. So here's a true story. A lady comes to us a couple years ago. She's already got a company. She's already got an operating agreement that she downloaded online. And she also needed us to do terms and conditions, some sales documents, some contracts for her employees, register a trademark. There was a lot of stuff. And so when we're redoing the operating agreement, I ask her about the structure. Now, what is the structure? So first of all is who are the owners? Okay. And I really need to know who the owners are and I, I need to know their nationality or if they're permanent residents. And that's because later on, we're going to have questions that uh, the options are limited by where you're from. Okay. So who are the owners? How many? Um, and a little bit more about them. Then I want to know what state are we going to be operating in? So for example, I'm a law firm in Florida and I'm sitting in Florida. Um, and, but maybe I'm a law firm in Florida, but I want to start doing business in Georgia. Right. And, and there's rules I would have to follow there. So I need to know the, the actual geographic locations of where the people want to do business. Okay. Then we're going to look at where we should create the company, which doesn't necessarily need to be the same place. So for example, I can set up a Delaware company to do business in New York or a Wyoming company to do business in Texas. Um, and there might be additional requirements for registering out of state companies to do business in state. And this is part of our process of structuring the business. So for example, when I was structuring EPGD, I was like, okay, we're going to set it up under the corporate statute. So it's, it's technically a Florida corporation, as opposed to my girlfriend, Dear De Niro has a, L, a, a law firm that's under the LLC statute. So it's a Florida LLC. Uh, and for us, it made a lot of sense to keep it local, right? Because we are here, there's, there's not really much of an advantage to me setting up a Texas company to run a Florida law firm. But this is part of the process, right? So I'm, I'm and, and by the way, I'm drawing this out on my dry erase board or on my yellow pad um, or on OmniGraffle on my computer. And I'm literally visualizing, okay, owners are up here. Maybe the holding companies are below. Maybe the subsidiaries are below that. Um, and at each step, I'm, I'm thinking one or two steps ahead. I'm like, okay, the next question is how are we going to tax this? So usually the bottom subsidiaries, we want them as pass through entities. So either as partnerships or sole proprietorships, which means we're going to be setting up LLCs. Then the holding companies, we might have some more options. We might have uh, a reason for it to be taxed as a C corp which is where it would file its own corporate tax return and pay 21% taxes on its profits, which would be the accumulated profits of all the subsidiaries. Or if we qualify, and I say that because not every company can qualify to be taxed as an S corp. So if we qualify, maybe we're going to elect to be taxed as an S corp. And so the general qualifications are you can't have companies owning other companies in this structure. It typically needs to be real people own the S corp. Now that S corp can have subsidiaries, but it needs to be real people. And since this is US tax law, they need to be US citizens or permanent residents. Um, so you can't have a foreign person. You can't have a company. Um, there might be circumstances where you could use a trust, but, but the point of the matter is um, there are limitations. And, and then the S Corp, it's going to file a tax return to the IRS, but it's also a pass through entity, meaning that the owners themselves are gonna report the income the profit or loss on their personal tax returns. So in our situation, I report it with my partners. Um, we file the 1120S tax form to the IRS. We don't file anything with the state of Florida because Florida doesn't make us. And then on my, on our personal tax returns, we're going to, we're going to add the profit and loss on our 1040s. And so that's, that's part of the structuring. And then there might be a reason to have it be a default pass through. Maybe it's just passed through from the bottom to the top. Um, and maybe there's no good uh, advantage to having the tax structure. So this part of the conversation, the tax conversation, I want to have it with the CPA. I want to go to the CPA or have the CPA on the phone or have them come to our office and make sure that we're all seeing eye to eye, that there's not something we don't know. So here's what happens in my story. Lady, we do all this work three years ago. When we're doing the work, I ask, how's it going to be taxed? She says as a partnership, she probably said something like, I'm not sure, but whatever the default is. And I'm like, okay, we're going to leave it as a partnership. Then she must, and I say then must, because I don't know, she went to the CPA and the CPA set it up as an S corp. How do I know? Because now the lady just came back 
And apparently the CPA is telling them that since the partners did uneven distributions, and we'll talk about that in one second. Basically, if you're 50-50, then the profit distributions from an S-Corp have to be 50-50. It can't be like, oh, well, you spent more money on that trip to Vegas, or your car lease is a little bit more than mine, so I'll take a little bit more money on the next distribution. No, at the end of the year, the distributions need to be exact. And so now these ladies have a company that no longer probably qualifies for S-Corp status, and I'm going through all my records, and I can't find any example of where we talked about their tax structure. So guys, if you're talking to your CPA, just say, hey, can I give a call to my lawyer? And if you're talking to a lawyer, I'm gonna tell you to call your CPA.